Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be reading our Islamic Studies series part 8, Life Before Becoming a Nabi. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a Nabi or messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was 40 years old. Many important things happened in his life during this period. In many ways, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to qualify to become the messenger. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about eight years old when his grandfather passed away. At that time, his uncle, Abu Talib, took responsibility for taking care of him. Abu Talib was a Quraysh leader and a merchant. He often traveled to Syria and Yemen to trade. On one of his trips to Syria, Abu Talib took his nephew, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with him. In Syria, they met a Christian monk named Bahira. This man knew many things about religion. He read from ancient books that a Nabi would come to Arabia. When he saw young Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recognized that the boy would be a Nabi one day. He told Abu Talib to take good care of the boy because he was special. In Mecca, everybody loved young Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of his good nature and sincerity. People lovingly called him Alami, the trustworthy, and as Sadiq, the truthful. This was because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never told lies. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about 15 years old, a war broke out between the Quraysh and a tribe in Ta'i. This, this war lasted for four years and was known as the Fijar War. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam participated in the war, but not as a fighter, as a young boy collecting arrows shot at the Quraysh. His experiences in the war had a lasting impact on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shortly after the war, the Quraysh realized they needed to strengthen their position so that at any time there was a war, other Arab tribes would help and support them. An agreement was made, known as the Alliance of Fudl. Muhammad sallam was 20 years old when this alliance was formed. He personally did not sign the alliance, but he was present when the deal was made. Much later, when he became a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continued to support the alliance. When Muhammad sallam was a young man, a rich widow named Khadija who hired him to conduct business on her behalf. She sent him to Syria to trade. After he returned from Syria and handed over the entire profit from the trade, Khadija who was deeply impressed. She asked Muhammad وسلم, to marry her. At that time, Muhammad وسلم, was 25 years old and Khadija who was 40 years old. They were married and had several children. All of their sons died before or during childhood, but all of their daughters survived. Their dearest daughter was Fatima. Nabi Muhammad وسلم, lived in a society where sons were preferred by everybody, and newborn daughters were often buried alive, but not in the Nabi Muhammad's family. All the daughters received loving care in the family. There was also a young slave in their family named Zayd ibn Harith. Khadija Rajivatallah had given Zayd as a gift to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Later, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adopted Zayd as his son. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about 25 years old, the Quraysh decided to rebuild the Kaaba. The foundation of the Kaaba was damaged due to a recent flood. All the clans under the Quraysh tribe helped reconstruct the Kaaba. A problem arose when the famous black stone was about to be placed in its proper location on the east wall. Each clan wanted the honor of placing the black stone. They argued about it, but a conclusion was not reached. The clans were almost on the verge of fighting with each other on this issue. Ultimately, they agreed to listen to Muhammad Wasallam's decision because they trusted him. He solved the problem in a unique way. He took a sheet of cloth and spread it on the ground. Then he placed the black stone on the cloth. He told each member of the clan to hold the cloth, lift it, and carry the black stone to the east wall of the Kaaba. Thus, no single person or clan carried the stone, but everyone carried it together. The problem was solved in a friendly manner. People liked Muhammad sallallahu decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Muhammad sallallahu from idol worshipping at all stages in his life, even when he was a young boy. His uncle Abu Talib always attended festivals in honor of idols and wanted his nephew to join him. But Muhammad sallallahu never attended any such event. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from all forms of social and moral evil. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a young boy, it was acceptable for boys to participate in social gatherings and drink wine. Sometimes young boys would play games in front of people while naked. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never participated in any such social gatherings or games. 
When Muhammad Sallallahu was still a young boy, he was playing with some boys who decided to carry stones from one place to another. They took off their clothes to put the stones on them to make the stones easier to carry. When Muhammad Sallallahu started to take off his clothes, he felt a hard punch and a voice told him to put on his garment. Instead of taking off his clothes, now he wrapped them even tighter around his body. Thus, he was the only boy carrying stones wearing clothes. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam felt very badly when he saw the people in Mecca were greedy, corrupt, and ignorant. He disliked how people treated the poor and women. He thought that if something good he thought that if something good did not happen to the community, the people would be ruined. He realized the spiritual condition of the people in Mecca was very bad. The idols they worshipped were mere stones. They could not speak, think, or help anyone. These idols could not bring truth, let alone happiness, into people's lives. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to find truth, but he realized truth could not be found in the words of rabbis, rabbis, Christian monks, or other religious people who gathered at the time of Hajj. He wondered who created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He wondered who brought the rain and who provided the air. People lived and died, but why were they born and what was the purpose of life? Sometimes he wondered if he was going insane from all these thoughts. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam particularly loved to go to a cave named Hira in a mountain near Makkah. The mountain and the cave were a few miles northeast of Makkah. Every year in the month of Ramadan, he went to the cave and spent a long time there. In the quietness inside the cave, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was able to concentrate and reach a new level of thinking and understanding. One day when he was about 40 years old, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was meditating in cave Hira. At that time, Angel Jibreel appeared before him. The angel brought a divine revelation. Receipt of the revelation indicated that Muhammad was selected to become a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.